Uh, the new efficiency is 31.3% uh, or 0 0.313. Uh, you should be correct if you have 0 0.3166 because of the different X values that we use, the different H's that you got. So uh, you're within range if you have 0 point, uh, if you have 31.6. I have 31.3. Um, that usually depends on, uh, that, that, that small difference usually depends on whether you, uh, for example, the V value, whether you reduced it or you, in, you maintained it as it was, or you reduced it to four decimal places, uh, the dryness fraction, if you remained with three decimal places or two, th that's the cause for some of those variations. But if you had 36 or 35, then definitely you'd be wrong. Um, what the observation should be that once we have non-isentropic processes in the expansion and in the um, in the expansion process and in the pumping process. Once we deviate from reversibility, we certainly uh, reduce the efficiency of the system. Like we said earlier on, once we deviate from reversi uh, reversible processes, the work produced reduces because the maximum work that can be produced is with uh, reversible processes. And uh, the max, uh, once we still deviate from reversibility, we increase the amount of power consumed in systems. So because we, we have an isentropic efficiency of 0 0.75 and not one, you realize for the pump, you realize that the pump consumes more power than it had originally. Simply by looking at H4 minus H3 being divided by a decimal, uh, by, by a fraction, indicates that the value of, 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 of pump work has increased. And also having that you're multiplying the original work by the turbine by a, by a fraction, 0 0.85, automatically shows you that your, net, your work produced by the turbine has actually reduced. And meaning, if you have a reduced this and then increase the other, the net work automatically reduces. So what is the work ratio? Uh, that one I'm just introducing in the question. Then you, you, if you, I want you to go and calculate the original work ratio, which was work turbine minus pump work, uh, pump work and the new work ratio, you realize that the work ratio has greatly reduced. The net work has reduced, and of course, the gross work reduced. So you will check and see what happens to the work ratio. Part three, basically, is about what we have studied today. If a reheat process were incorporated into the steam plant, such that the steam, if a reheat process were incorporated into the steam plant, such that the steam leaves the high pressure turbine at 20 bar, and enters the low pressure turbine at 20 bar and high pressure turbine entry temperature, calculate the turbine efficiency excluding feed pump work and assuming a centropic expansion and compression. Basically, part C is telling us we're no longer having a single turbine. We have two turbines. No longer having a single turbine, we have two turbines. And uh, you'll also notice that part C is not built on part two or B, it's built on part one. Why? Because uh, the, ex the statement says that calculate the turbine efficiency. Oh, sorry, it wasn't turbine. You were supposed to calculate the, it's not turbine, pump, the plant efficiency, not turbine. Calculate the plant efficiency, excluding, I'm correcting something. It's not supposed to be calculate the turbine efficiency. It's supposed to be calculate the plant efficiency. Calculate the uh, plant efficiency, excluding feed pump work, and assuming isentropic expansion and compression. We are going back to one, A, where we had isentropic pa uh, pump work and isentropic turbine work. If the reheat process was incorporated, now we are going to incorporate a reheat process. We start off at, originally we were at 40 bar, so that ISO bar is 40 bars. We are maintaining a centropic efficiency. We are maintaining condenser pressure, sorry, boiler pressure and condenser pressure. But now we are no longer going to drop from the, um, from the boiler pressure to the condenser pressure through one turbine. We are going to have two turbines, the high pressure turbine and the low pressure turbine. We enter the high pressure turbine at 40 bar. 
until we get to 20 bar. Let me drop the bigger one so that you can be clear to all of you. Basically, we are coming from 40 bar, dropping to a certain pressure, which has been given. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are moving from 40 bar, dropping through the high pressure turbine until we are at 20 bar. So basically, this is a 20 bar isomer. And we are entering the second turbine at 40 bar and initial the temperature at which our working fluid entered the first turbine. If a relief process was incorporated in the steam plant such that the steam leaves the high pressure turbine at 20, it enters at 40 and leaves it at 20, and enters the low pressure turbine at 20 bar, it enters the low pressure turbine at 20 bar, and the high pressure turbine entry temperature, and the temperature at which it entered the high pressure turbine, which temperature were given to be 400 degrees. So. Here we have 40 bar, 400 degrees. Here we have 20 bar, 400 degrees. Good enough. We have S1 and we are saying it's an isentropic process. So we have S1 and we say S1 is equal to S2. Except now, it is no longer S2 at condenser pressure. It's equal to S2 at the reduced pressure of 20 bar. And now we want to establish, if we have S1 and it's equal to S2, is 0.2 in the mixed region or in the superheat region? If it's in the mixed region, we find X2 at that pressure of 20 bar and find the associated H2 value. If it's on the outside of the saturated vapor line, we now find out what would be the H value at that point. So we go into our steam tables. So we have our S1 value. We all know it, we had it originally. S1 was 6.7733. Now we are at 20 bars and we want to find what 6.733 is. You go to 20 bars. At 20 bar, you realize that the SG value at 20 bar is 6.3367. Is 6.3367. Now, we need to find what is, that means that this point two is not in the mixed region because the S value at that point is greater than the SG value at 20 bar. I hope I'm clear to that point. So now, how are we going to find the H value at that point? Interpolation. We are going to interpolate. And how do we do that? There are many ways. So basically, how can we find H2?
One, we need to find the temperature of two, which we also don't know. So basically, we are going to say if we have 300 degrees, let us assume we are looking at temperature, entropy, and enthalpy. We have 300 degrees and 20 bar. 300 degrees and 20 bar. 20 bar. Because we are in the superheat region. So 300 degrees, 20 bar, 300 degrees, 20 bar, 300 degrees. What's the S value? 6.7, 6, 6, 6, 9. So 6.7, 6, 9, 6. What's the H value at, 20, at 300 degrees? Because we don't know the temperature yet. So at that, we have this 3, 0, 2, 5. Point zero. There is a temperature we don't know, but we know the entropy, which we have just found out. That entropy is the entropy you found originally, which is the same as H S two. That entropy is six point seven seven three three. Six point seven seven three three. Then we have 400 degrees. We have, at 400, we have an S value, which is 7 point, that's a 20 bars, eh? 7 point zero, 7 point one two nine six. Here we don't know the value. Sorry, there's something that's missing. Okay, yes. Yes, we don't know T, we don't know T, is it T2? Yes, we don't know T2. And uh, we also don't know H2. But we know at 400, 20 bar, we have 3248.7. I'm going to explain. We can find H1, we already know it. We also know S1. But at 20 bars, we have established S1 is equal to S2, but the S2 we have at point 0.2, S value we have at point 0.2, is greater than the SG value at 20 bar, where we are stopping. Meaning it's not in the mixed region, Point 0.2 in that is in the superheat region. So how do we find our H2 value? We don't know it. But at 20 bar, what do we know? At 20 bar, we know the S value. We don't know the temperature and we don't know H2. This might not even be necessary. But at 300 degrees, we know the entropy and we also know the H value. And at 400 degrees, we know the entropy and we know the H value. So how do we find H2? The longer route would be to find T2. And having known the T2 value, once you know this and T, if you know this and that, T2, you can find H2. How do you find T2? You can find T2 from, if you know the S value at T2, which T2 we don't know, but you know the S value. If you know the S value at T2, you know that S value at 300, you can find what T2 is. Even if you just took the other side, if you know that the S value at T2, you know that S value at, at 400, you can find what T2 is. After you've established what T2 is, you can then go and use it by knowing three, the H value at 300, and you also know T2, you can find what H2 is. Similarly, if you know T2, and you know 400, you know the H value at 400, you can find what H2 is. Any method can lead you there. However, having established this, 
If you know this and that, and you know that, that, you can also find this. If you know this and that, and know that, you can also find this. So I want you to find what H2 is from this ex these expressions. Using interpolation. Some people might want some help. Basically, what we are saying, H2 minus 3025 over, over 6, 6.7733 minus 6.7696 is equal to 3248.7 minus 3025 over 7.1296 6.7696. That's one way. Find the value from that. That's one way of doing it. The other is using this information, find T2 and use T2 to find. You don't use this anymore, and then you use this and that. You should have the same answers. Right. Someone said they have an answer already. T2 is equal to 300. So that would be the longer route, but you still end up with the answer. So if you have T2 as the value you have established, please help us find what H2 is using that method. And the others can go direct using the method I provided. See the answers you get. T2 is equal to what? Someone has a weird word. Hey, 300 point, um, 300.825. Yes, 301. That's what I have. So the answer for H2 is 3027. Is that what you get? Threes. Yes, 3027.9. Uh -huh. 0.4.9. Oh, that depends on which of these you have used. Okay, so we have 3027.299 as your H2 value. I personally have 3027.78, so, but that should be fine, depending on which direction you use. Doctor, do we get the different answers with interpolation and extrapolation? Try it out. That's the whole point of learning. You will not get the exact figures, but they will be close in range. Like I said, the people who use that, this, will end up with a certain answer. The people who use this to find the T2 value and yes, then use this, that, and that, this and that to find H2 will also end up with an answer. But the, answer, the answers will be different, but the difference will be um, minimal. So 3027.299, okay, something in the range of that. After you found H2, you remember this side is not changing much because what is happening is here. So now you need to also establish three and four. Three is easy to get. You simply go to 400 degrees Celsius, 20 bar, which you already have. You have read it off. 400 degrees Celsius, 20 bar, what do you get? 3248.7. 3248.7, then you also find the S value, S5, which is equal to S, sorry, S3, which is equal to S4. That S value should be equal to, um, S at 20 bar, 
400 degrees, you already established that. 400 degrees, 7.1296, you already have it. So S3 is equal to S4, find out at 0 0.05 bar what the SG value is. 0 0.05 bar. The SG value is 8.396. Because it's 8.396, it shows you that 4 lies in the mixed region because it's less than 8.3960. Uh, so find the X4 value. Once you find the X4 value, you should be able to find what H4 is. So the X4 value should be 0 0.84. X 0 0.84. That should enable you to get the H4 value. And give me the new efficiency. I'm waiting for the answer of the new efficiency. Some people are wondering when they use extrapolation, okay, one, they get 3027.023, others get 3026.85. By the way, I look through the entire working. Take note, if it's an assignment, I mark the answer. I look through the process and mark the answer. If it is an exam, I look through the entire process. So that those two deviations are not as a result of your errors per se. They are as a result of having values that are not necessarily 100% linear. The changes are not that 100% linear. So depending on what you use, extrapolation or interpolation, you might end up with different answers. But those answers do not deviate from each other too much. I want you to find the, the percentage difference or error. 3027.023 minus 3026.85 over. Eh? The difference is not that much, so don't worry about that. Hey, you focus so much on that. I'm waiting for efficiency. I'm not going to work it out for you. Are you all there? <laughs>
Remember you're neglecting feed pump work. So all we need is for you to know heat input and heat output. Basically, I want to put the equations in red without marking. You will have work net, we are neglecting feed pump work, so you're basically going to be H1 minus H2 plus H3 minus H4 over heat input over H1 minus H5 plus H3 minus H2. Or Or H1 minus H2 plus H3 minus H4 over H1 minus H6. The definition in this answer should be really small. But this is, uh, should be getting almost the same answers. Did you guys stop working? Oh. You should end up with 38 point something, 38.3 or 30 something to that, to that effect.
these values should not be different from each other. That re one five. Your differences arise of arise from the H two value and the H four value. Thirty eight point three. Good. Anyway, well, uh, on the Rankine cycle, we have we could have had one more topic, and that's the regenerative cycle. Um, yeah, the regenerative cycle. But in the interest of time, 